This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and welcome to this week's edition of Business in Hawaii. I'm Dalen Yanagita and we're broadcasting live from the Think Tech studios in downtown Honolulu. If you want to tune in live, we are at www.thinktechhawaii.com. And you may also subscribe to our programs and get on our, get on our mailing list there as well. The theme of Business in Hawaii is to share with you stories of local businesses by local people. Our guests share with us how are the, they were able to build successes in a challenging environment and at the same time support our community in the, 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 the many struggles that we do have. In our studio today, we have Andrew Campion, founder and director of Handy Andy. I apologize, his last name is French. I am so not <laughs> the linguist. So, um, but thank you for joining us, Andy, and welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Um, so, Handy Andy Hawaii. Well, what is that? Tell us about So, that. Handy Andy Hawaii uh, serves as a transitional employment platform for military veterans exiting the service, and we operate in the home maintenance space via handyman and construction. Wow. Okay. So, what is your mission? So, is our mission is mm -hmm. to provide um, centralized home care services to the consumer. Fantastic. Using a veteran to do it. Um, I want you to share with our viewers what inspired you to get started. But before we go there, we're going to put up a video that you shared with us. Mm -hmm. And so 2012, is that when you retired? No, so I got out, I did 10 year service and I got out in 2016, January. Okay, and you made Hawaii your home? Yeah, so I was in North Carolina the last five years of service. And my parents moved out here from Washington, or I'm sorry, from Oregon back in 2011. And then we used to come here traveling every year for Christmas. And then I knew someday I would end up here. And then as soon as I got out of service, the day after I flew out, bought a one-way ticket and never looked back. So. Fantastic. And when did Handy Andy Hawaii start up? Uh, January of 2017. Wow. So tell me about, so I, I understand that you served mm -hmm. and you saw a need for right. folks who, who were getting out. Tell me about that. Tell me about so, how that spoke to you. So if I date back to 2016, I looked at the process of exiting the service and I just put myself in the shoes of people who didn't really have anything to do after. And it doesn't look that good. There was no really, uh, there's no clear path on how to make that transition smoothly. Or how do your skills like transfer into the civilian world? So there's a lot of lost souls and a lot of people who are scared. Even a lot of my peers who are very specialized, they still had a lot of trepidation getting out of the service. And then we were trying to figure out, well, okay, so I understand that there's a niche here. There's people who need employment, and how can what could we? What's the vehicle that we can allow them to have employment, right? So the first handy andy wasn't the first um, concept. We actually had another concept. It was a little bit more robust. So it was a we acquired a drone company to fly UAVs. And that's something I did in the service as well. And then we figured out it was just the aptitude was too much to really mass produce veterans. And so we had to scratch that idea. And, and, but it, it told us a, a concept, OK? So we're awarded the GI Bill when, I, when we complete service to do continuing education, whether it's uh, going to uh, do a degree path or an apprenticeship program. So I was doing a little research on what it would take to get that drone industry accredited and what it would take to do that. And I was like, okay, this is a long path, but how could we um, you know, consolidate this, these steps? And so we started thinking, me and my father were here in Waikiki at um, Rumfire, and we were, how could we mass produce a lot of people? What is a, a unique skill that every service member has or possesses? And our, we're all somewhat familiar with a janitorial maintenance type of work, so handy, you're changing stuff, you know, cleaning up and all kinds of stuff like that. And then we're like, okay, so that's where it was, the idea was born. And then we just had to reverse engineer the model on what it would take to be able to get guys to come in and then go market our efforts and our mission. Wow. So how do you go, though, from, from serving in our military to understanding how to start up a business of your own? Yeah, co does... Coaching. Oh. Definitely coaching. There's no, it's, it's not something you don't read a book to figure that out. You don't, it's not like I listen to a podcast and you figure it out. It's just my dad is a, a very good mentor who has a ton of success 
successful businesses across the years, and he just coached me through the process, still is it today. So so when you started, was it just you, and you were, you were doing? Yeah, so the, we had three guys initially started. I would go out and do like the sales and marketing, and then we have three other guys in the field full time. And is that just on Oahu? Yeah, it's just on Oahu. Are you thinking about expanding to the other islands? We are. We're actually going for, so this is a prototype model for a franchise. Okay. So we started last year with three guys. Now we're in the mid-60s. Wow. So workforce is fast and growing. And so once we hit all the metrics and our system and process are fully developed here, then our triggers are met, then we're going for national expansion. Wow. Okay, so let's back up a little bit. You said it's a prototype for a franchise. Right. So I think what's important for you to share with people is wh where, do you, where do you get that idea? Where do you start? I mean... I, I, I doubt many entrepreneurs say, hey, I'm going to start up this business and it's going to eventually be a franchise. What? Well, it always goes, it goes back to starting with the end in mind. Before you start something, have a clear goal to where you're trying to go. And then our first my big goal with me and my family set forth was to hire a thousand veterans in five years. So the only, I can't do that in Hawaii, so we have to do it nationally. Uh, what, what are some of the statistics about um, veterans in Hawaii? Do you know how many approximately we have? So uh, there's, a, there's like 140,000 veterans in Hawaii. Wow. Yeah. So it's a wow. And so what makes that your niche? I, you know, I think that it's an amazing way to give back to the community, to the country, though, those who have given their time right. and their energy and their loyalty to the country, serving the country. Where did where did that come from? I understand that you served, but right. there's got to be something bigger. Well, it's always about it's a okay. So it's about serving a cause greater than yourself, right? Um, the military did a really good job of recruiting people and getting them in the service. But when you look at exiting, it's now that you're not part of their efforts anymore. There's really not the same helping hand as it was initially on the forefront. And so that's where we determined that the private sector is going to be the one responsible for filling that void. And I'm you know hopefully we can start a trend where other people follow suit. How do you connect yourself to to these veterans so that you're an, an, a, a logical progression to them exiting and then looking for employment with you? Yeah, so there's the transition programs currently out there that we're reaching out to. We use social media and any kind of social channel to really get our name out there. And pretty much any um, hookup that we can get, we're, we want to exhaust all means and hire as many as we can. So, mm -hmm. so do you hire non-veterans? We do. Yeah, because really in order to get these guys fully trained when they get out, you have to have these guys who've been in the trades for 10, 20 years who can really teach them good habits. Mm -hmm. Because we don't just hire people who are skilled out of the military. There's some, there's, we have some guys who've never lifted a finger, but they, they had the right mindset. And we have a platform where we could train. And we trained them, to, and now they're very successful. Fantastic. So tell me about some of the, the services that you offer. Yeah, so uh, basic handyman repair, so we could do like um, light installations, ceiling fan installations, we could do full-on remodels and uh, full-blown construction, new builds, and everything in between that. So we operate under a builder contractor license. Okay. So my guess is that there will be a lot of folks or maybe even some other businesses that are looking for licensed contractors. Right. So is that... Yeah, so that is the thing. So when you, realize, uh, you talk to a lot of consumers and they have a handyman that they're using, which is great, no, you know, continue to use them. But generally speaking, they're not going to be licensed or have the insurance and bonds that we do, right? So if you want some accountability, hold somebody accountable, it's better to help get a business accountable than your friend Bob, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then it gets tricky once if something does go wrong. Nice. So tell me about some of the larger projects that you've done. Yeah, so we're, we're currently, we're, we do a couple commercial projects. We're on pancakes and waffles. We're just finishing up one of our final walkthroughs on that. We do some of, some of the big hotels we've done some renovations on. Nice, yeah. very nice. It's very versatile. Right. These home flips. So you said 60 employees currently and growing, mm -hmm. um, and you service all parts of Oahu. Correct. And so I did notice on your website that people can go there and fill out a, a, a form. Yeah, so if you at handyandyhawaii.com, you can say get quote now, and then we'll ask you some basic questions, your address, name, and best contact information goes right to our call center and they'll get back to you soon within 20 minutes. You have a call center? We do have a call center. Wow. Wow. Yes. Uh, is that call center locally based? Yes, locally based. Absolutely. And locally staffed, obviously. Locally staffed. Wow. And is that 24 hours? It is. 
Yeah, so we have emergency services too. So outside of 10 p.m. is emergency services. So it's a little bit more of an expedited fee, but we could still, if you have emergency plumbing or some kind of emergency um, issue, then you can't wait till the morning, then call us and we'll be there. Fantastic. So where is your home base? Uh, it's in Mapuna Puna. Okay. So near the industrial area over there. Okay. Kind of to the U-Haul. Right. Yeah. Um, so Hawaii's been experiencing some inclement weather uh, in the past couple of years. There, there have been several um, close calls with hurricanes. Uh, people must be burning up your lines um, with, with needs. What types of handy needs do do your clients call you for? So um, recently with the hurricane scares, we did a lot of sandbagging and board ups. Oh. So protect from debris and then to help uh, mitigate flooding. Oh, good to know because th where I work, we're out there trying to figure out where we're gonna go to get a sandbag. Right, right. <laughs> right. So actually another cr uh, sister company of ours that's managed and owned by us is uh, it's, uh, called Rescue One. And what it does, it does mitigation, flood work, fire damage. Oh, wow. It's a re restoration company. That started from a flood that happened out in Waikai in April, I believe. Right. Really? So we went out there, we got hired for the job, and then we created an opportunity out of necessity. Wow. Okay. So so there's, an, there's another business called Rescue One. I yes. didn't know this. Yes. There's so a lot more. Yeah. So that was, that's brand new this right. year, mm -hmm. right? And you do restoration work. Yes. Um, specifically restoration work from damage. Yeah, um, flood mitigation, restoration, fire okay. damage, mold remediation. Yeah. Wow, wow. And we've had un unpredictable weather, so I'm sure that, that there's a lot of space there. For right, so to... collectively between the two during the uh, hurricane scare, they were working hand in hand, cohesive unit, going out and servicing the island, and they did really good, proud of everybody for their efforts. That is really Because it was a long amazing. day, very logistically intense because you know the scarcity in the stores yes. and just getting places was kind of tricky. Right. So. People go into this frenzy trying absolutely. to figure out what they're supposed to do. They could just call your line, yeah, absolutely. right? That's fantastic. Um, we are going to go to a short break and when we come back I want to talk about, I, I didn't even realize that you expanded your business recently this year, but I do know that you have even bigger plans to yeah. expand that business. Um, I also want to talk about some of the accolades um, that you've received locally for the work that you've done in this in your fast-growing business okay. um, and we'll talk about that when we come back um, we are going to go to a short break this is business in Hawaii and we'll see you back here shortly this is think tech Hawaii raising public awareness from the Foundation for a Better Life. Hello, my name is Stephanie Mock, and I'm one of three hosts of Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Food and Farmer series. Our other hosts are Matt Johnson and Pamai Weigert, and we talk to those who are in the fields and behind the scenes of our local food system. We talk to farmers, chefs, restaurateurs, and more to learn more about what goes into sustainable agriculture here in Hawaii. We are on at Thursdays at 4 p.m., and we hope Welcome back. This is Business in Hawaii, and my guest today is Andrew Campion. Andrew is the founder and director of Handy Andy Hawaii. Handy Andy Hawaii was started out of a, a passion to help people um, coming out of the military on that exit um, with an opportunity to really um, get into careers that um, are meaningful um, and support, basically a support. Um, Andy, you have been recognized um, by Pacific Business News um, as being top, was it top 25? Yeah, we're 23rd fastest growing uh, company. One, one of tw top 23 fastest growing companies. Um, we have a picture of an article that PBN did um, on you. You want to talk about that article and how that came about? Yeah, so in the process of getting recognized and the validity of the process, to be able to do our goal, which is hire a thousand people, you have to get out there and exposure and do press releases. And 
we sought out to go for this and submitted our financials and turned out that we were selected. Right. I didn't know where we, uh, we had no clue where we ranked and it was just let the cards fall where they fall and put us in a decent place. Very nice. We have a picture of you accepting that award. We could put that up. So um, is this where they recognize? Yes, this is where they recognize us at the event there in, in August. Tell us about some of um, the other bis the other types of businesses that you are you are up against or focused on with. Oh, uh, so there was a couple con just construction companies. There was real estate companies, um, food industries. There was very small and large. Yeah, small Fantastic. and large. That must have been such a such a rewarding moment for you. Such a satisfying moment. It, it was definitely nice. It was definitely checking the box. But now we have to tighten it up and really right. close that gap and go for that top spot. That's well, that message about. Hiring 1,000 vets in, in five years, that, that's amazing. And I think that probably speaks volumes to um, you really sticking close and aligning to, to your mission. Um, we have another picture of you and um, s some of your coworkers. Mm -hmm. I think it's three of you. Tell us about this. Yeah, so this is my, my little brother. He works in the company as well, uh, Nick Compion. And on the right, is uh, Nathan Stowell. He was one of the founding members as well. He was probably one of the best guys that we've ever had in this company. And unfortunately, he passed away um, April 1st, this last Easter, hiking on the Omana Trail. Uh, that was a very devastating blow to this organization because he was one of the heart and souls of the company. He was a lively, intelligent, and just a charismatic character. It's hard, you can't replace somebody like that. So it was devastating for our peers and the guys to work through it, you know. It turned the business in turmoil. But we persevered and stuck with the mission, but now we have a driving force to be able to hit our targets. You know, because the mission doesn't stop, right? You still have to, you know. As the founder of a very successful business, um, there are so many large corporations that focus on culture building, engagement, but right now you're a business of 60. Tell us about your culture and how important that is to you. I think that picture alone and how you speak of um, the, the inspiration that arrives from your coworkers and working together. Tell us about right. Handy Andy Hawaii's culture. So, it, so because of that um, military background that a lot of us have, it's that cohesive unit, that connected spirit that we all have, where we thrive and work under pressure together. It makes every, it's a forge is a tight bond that only few people really understand. And so, it's nice for these guys to be able to tra um, transition out and have a team of people who understand them and the trials and tribulations that they've faced up until that time of them coming out. So you have a culture that's very strong and very hard-headed as well, but they're tough, you know, young supportive. men. Supportive. Supportive. And um, becoming that, su that support on the exit, because I, I'm sure that a lot of them still um, do, do have some uh, struggle, not struggles, but um, the, the getting out of the military, one large um, organization into a, you know a different type of right. you know, community. It's it's scary for them because you figured the first and fifteenth every month they didn't have to think about getting paid. They didn't have to think about health care. They didn't have to think about anything. You know they had. I mean don't get me wrong. They had a, things to think about like staying alive. You know, mm -hmm. but when you get out, it's, there's a lot more things that you have to consider, and that's a lot of. We we've seen that come through. It's tough, but we're, we understand that, and because it's like the feel felt found. I've been through that, mm -hmm. and I can help you. And there's the resources we have afforded to you. Nice, very nice. Um, so the 60 employees that you have, um, are they all veterans? Most no, of them it, veterans? It's, it's, it's a mix. Mm -hmm. The veterans, are they local, or how, how did they find their way to Hawaii? This was their last tour of duty. The most, majority of them were stationed here at one point. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, is Hawaii is such a lovely place, and people want to stay here, but they're afraid to find employment, and they don't want to go back to Oklahoma. No offense to Oklahoma, mm -hmm. but if you're in Hawaii, why would you want to leave? Mm -hmm. And so they look for opportunity, and they find us. Fantastic. And so we're getting better and better about spreading our name and going offensive and trying to find them as well. Fantastic. Um, I know that you have much bigger plans um, than just staying on Oahu, that your expansion is going to go to the other islands, but I know that you've also been talking about expansion across the water and perhaps even internationally. Talk to uh, Absolutely. About that. Yeah, so we're going to primarily start on the West Coast and the East Coast and target very difficult markets that are highly veteran populated so we can achieve our goal. 
So we'll, we'll hit th those targets and then we'll start triggering other locations like uh, Texas, Florida, North Carolina, very um, veteran-centered locations. Uh, frequently in the media, um, people will say, you know, Hawaii is not very friendly to small business, but you seem to have decided that this is where you wanted to be and you were going to make something out of nothing. <laughs> so, so speak to us about really what that reality is. Is, is Hawaii really difficult to start up a business? Oh, it's, it's difficult. But at the end of the day, if there's a will, there's a way. And if you want it, you'll find it. Um, trust me, we, it wasn't easy to get to where we're at today but we wanted it and it was worth it. Our mission was worth it, so we had to dig deep and figure out what it took. When it comes to workforce development, I think you can argue anywhere um, across the nation it's difficult, to, it's difficult to find a good workforce, but Hawaii especially, because you know, it's hard to get people to show up to work when the surf's good. You know, so you gotta still produce knowing that there are factors out there that you can't control. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's challenging. It's, I'd, I'd say it poses a bigger challenge here than a lot of other states that I've been to, and I've been to yeah, a lot right. of states. So you said workforce development is a major struggle. What are the other barriers um, to starting up, being an entrepreneur and starting up a business? Well, so there's competition. There was uh, like over 500 other comp competitors in that space. You know, in our first year, we won Handyman Company of the Year. So uh, well, that was a good, we were surprised. Like, okay, we're brand new, but we're figuring this out. And it was nice to see that. But yeah, so barrier to entry, there was a competition there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what advice would you give to entrepreneurs like yourself that perhaps um, have never owned a business, just came out of, you know, whether it's um, serving the country or maybe private industry, what advice do you have for them if they want to be an entrepreneur and start up a successful business in Hawaii? Um, my first piece of advice and the most important of all of them is find a mentor because there's going to be so many questions. You're going to have more questions than answers. And uh, there's people who've done it before you. And you gotta trust their guidance to know that they have your best interest in hand. And uh, don't be afraid to fail and fall and you know, get back up and keep moving because it does happen and it's part of business. But it's about how you deal with those roadblocks. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So that's where a mentor and a leader can kind of help you, guide you through those trials and tribulations. So the expansion to the West Coast and then international is not where you're stopping. Um, you also talked to me about working currently on an accreditation for a, an accredited training program. T tell, tell me about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So it's a work in process. We're still about a year out from fully developing. It takes about two years of total um, legwork. But it's called the National Academy of Constructive Trades. And what that does is we understand that the prototype for, for men and women getting out of the service, they're not necessarily trained in these skills. So we have to uh, train them. Because work, like I said, workforce development was one of the biggest struggles that we've seen. So how can we effectively train them to optimize their potential? And then how can we let them use their benefits that they had used, so um, that they have afforded to them, so they get a good stipend from the government when they're going through these training programs and the, um, just being an intern as well. So what is that process like, uh, applying for accreditation? You said it's a two-year process. Right. I think most, most of the folks watching right now don't, don't know anything. Yeah, well, we're still currently going through the process, but you have to you have, to have a um, institution created, right? So creating an institution has its own instances and a curriculum, and then you have to get a, a registered accreditation program. And then after that, then you start going through the VA and start getting them to recognize it. And it just takes a lot of time and due diligence to validate. Mm -hmm. All of those requirements. So you've already created that curriculum. The curriculum is created. It's just, and and it's what, just is, time. what does it contain? It, it just individual trades. So you're getting a prototype uh, individual who could do plumbing, um, electrical, carpentry work. So who would you would you be an instructor? In uh, no, I'm not. I would not be an instructor. So do you contract with other organizations to bring that instruction in, or? No, we'll hire. We we hire. We have the person that works for. The, with us already. He's currently training the guys now, but just not in an official capacity like a school. Right. Wow. It's, it's on the job training right at the moment. So what is your hope to, when your accreditation is uh, finally arrives, um, what is your hope? What does this look like? What's the big picture? So the big picture is it's a school that provides employments to veterans and not just us, but we want to be able to provide to other people because I know Plumber Bob's down the street, he needs a workforce too. And if we could provide them people and veterans, we can hire, get our goal way faster 
if we source them to other companies as well. Fantastic. Um, so I'm sure that as the founder um, of this organization that's driven by the desire to support and to help people, that there are many ways that you, other ways that you give back to the community. Can you, can you share with us some of the ways that, um, that Handy Andy Hawaii gives back to the community? Yeah, so we, we are actually have some events coming up, some charity events coming up, like trash pickup and things of that nature. And that's one of the things we're actually pushing for year 19 to really get more involved in this community. Because we've been so focused on optimization and growth that we've kind of put that in the back burner. But that's our big initiative next year. Is but that get, definitely is full circle, right? Sure. I mean, you are providing these opportunities right. for the vets and then eventually... Well, we can always do more, right. but definitely. That's our focus right now is putting veterans into work. Fantastic, fantastic. What else do you want to share with our viewers about Handy Andy Hawaii and the journey that you've been on and the journey that you're going to continue forward? Well, give us opportunity. If you have any home or service needs, um, give us a call at 808-285-3443 or find us at handyandyhawaii.com and we'll take care of you and we thank you for putting a veteran to work. And what about those vets that are now watching us who want want to contact you? Yeah, so if you go to handyandyhawaii.com uh, slash forward slash recruitment, or you can just hit the recruitment tab on the website, there's an inquiry form where you can submit a resume and inquire right then and there, and we'll get back to you within the hour. Fantastic. Within the hour? Oh, yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> With a call line, 24-hour service, emergency services, just amazing. Um, Handy Andy Hawaii and what you do for the veterans and for uh, the local community is amazing. Um, congratulations on your success. I know that you'll have much more success going forward, and I'm looking forward to seeing seeing that grow. I appreciate that. Thank Thanks you. Thanks so much. We are out of time. Thank you to Andy for joining us today, and a huge thank you to our production staff. If you would like to be a guest on our show, please email your information to shows at thinktechhawaii.com. Business in Hawaii airs every Thursday at 2 o'clock, and we look forward to seeing you here next week.